Hey guys, welcome to PB Garage. Now I know we've got a lot of projects on the go here and it's probably hard to keep track of already, but I was starting to feel like we needed some five cylinder action in our life. So to that end, rabbit. <laughs> So I picked up this cheap rabbit. Now the main goal here is to start getting familiar with the 07K for some future projects we're looking at, but I figured it might be fun to build myself a little hatch on a budget, try to get the thing to handle decently well, sound good, and really like just build a slow car fast kind of a thing. Uh, Cause let's face it, the 2.5 NA is never gonna be a really fast car no matter what you do, but at least you can make it kind of fun. So used car prices, as I'm sure you guys all know, a little bit crazy lately and I couldn't bring myself to spend like five six thousand dollars for a half decent rabbit or golf mark six so when I spotted this thing for 1200 bucks I figured I'd bring it home and see how much punishment I was in for see how much you know it needed turns out I was in for a lot um, but as we go through this and see like the total amount of money we're gonna see that it's not too bad um, now the real question is like what's the total, right, to get it running properly back on the road and to pass a safety inspection that we have here. So let's start looking through all the immediate issues I came up against to get the car through our safety inspection. What I'll do here is I'll keep a running tab of all the costs as we go through it. And for most of the work I've done to the car, I'm gonna create DIY videos, I've shot everything. So if you see anything that you're interested in, um, check the description below, check the tags in the video, or check out the playlist on this project. And as I get videos edited and posted, I'll update the links so that you guys can see all of the work. First big price tag goes for the car itself. Um, I felt like it was a good deal considering what I was seeing around, uh, even with all the issues that I could see right away. I got the car for 1200 bucks. So we'll start with that on our first line of our bill here. Now the first issue I had to tackle was a massive coolant leak. When I drove the car home, I could barely make it a few minutes up the road and I'd have to refill the coolant bottle. But uh, luckily the car was really close to where I live, so I was able to get it home. Um, once I got it home, I loosened the rad fan shroud because I could kind of see where the leak was coming from and I had to look behind. Sure enough, radiator had holes in the bottom few rows there. Um, so I had to get a new radiator that sent me back 196.51. And then I chose to replace the coolant reservoir and the cap. I probably could have left the old ones, but they were cheap. It was only an extra $21.52 for both of those. So I went ahead and the total for the cooling system with those uh, three things was 218.03. So next I did my routine maintenance kind of stuff because the car had been sitting for a while. So I did like air filter, oil filter, cabin filter, um, spark plugs, all that stuff came out to 7221 and I got new wipers, uh, all three wipers on the car. That was another 2823 for a total of 144 in what we call kind of general maintenance type of stuff. Now, one thing that did surprise me, I had to order a new uh, HVAC blower, so the blower fan. Um, the one that was in the car was kind of stiff, I guess, and it kept blowing the 40 amp fuse. Um, that blower was surprisingly expensive at $91.54. Now, the suspension in the car was absolutely thrashed. It had three of the four springs were broken. Um, dampers were pretty shot. Front mounting bearings for the struts were totally destroyed. I looked into getting some Monroe like quick strut replacements, um, but for about the same money as it would have set, set me back for a set of four of those, I got uh, Coney's and Eibach lowering springs, and those sent me back 940.54, and then 128.35 for new strut mounts and bellows to go on the front struts. Uh, so that total for the suspension was 1,068.89, almost as much as the whole car. Now I got pretty lucky with the brakes, even though everything looked pretty bad when I got the car home because it was all rusted up from sitting. Um, once I took everything apart, cleaned it all up, all I had to really replace was one rear caliper because the the boot on the piston was um, torn, so I was able to get a junkyard replacement for that. 
but all the rotors and pads were still pretty new, um, just covered in a bit of rust. So I just had to get that off with an angle grinder. Um, I did end up buying some new hardware for the brakes and new flex lines in the front, just because the ones that were on it had a little bit of a crack, not in the actual flex line, but in the little sheath uh, that kind of protects it. All that added up together. So all the brake parts uh, was 9548. I did end up having to replace outer tie rod ends, which set me back another 7585. Uh, the ones on the car still work. They didn't have play, but the uh, one of them had a torn boot and the other one, the boot was almost torn. So they wouldn't have passed our inspection. I had to replace them. Now, a few more parts I had to replace, but managed to find at the, at the local junkyard. Includes a pair of knock sensors and a heat shield to protect them, a wheel bearing, ABS sensor to go with that, uh, and an alternator, which I actually had to take back twice because the first one I got from the junkyard was bad, but luckily they kind of let me just straight swap it for the next one. Um, I even managed to find some splash guards for the front and a belly pan, which I could have reused the old ones and like zip tied them together because they were pretty busted up, but um, I figured I'd swap them anyways. Uh, same for the replacement hood, like I probably could have gotten through the inspection with the hood that was on the car, maybe, but I found one in the junkyard that was decent, so I replaced that. My whole junkyard bill, after I returned a couple parts that had core charges on them and stuff, uh, was 168.53. Now, just to be kind of nitpicky about costs here, um, I should easily add 100 bucks in gas. That's like back and forth to the junkyard or picking up a couple of parts, whatever. Um, 20 bucks in welding wire for the exhaust repairs, 20 bucks for the exhaust sleeve clamp, which I already had in stock, but we'll call it 20 bucks. Um, and then let's call it another 50 bucks for like PB blaster, grease, acetylene, uh, and a couple of beers for, my, for myself. Um, so all those consumables, we'll call that 190 bucks. Now I had to mess around with the shifter bushing to try and free up the shifter. And I spent a ton of time like lubing things and greasing things and cleaning stuff out. Um, but all that we'll call it, you know, roughly free. I had to polish the headlights too, but you know, that's just the sweat equity that you kind of put into the work, right? Uh, luckily the car tires that were on the car were in decent shape, so they'll pass the inspection. And I'm not gonna include costs like insurance and licensing fees, inspection, all that stuff, because no matter what car you buy, you, you end up having to pay that. Uh, so right now I have a car that'll go down the road, no lights on the dash, pass our inspection here so I can start driving it. And uh, if we total all up the costs that we have so far, um, we're at 3,276. So there you go guys, just over $3,100. We have a nice, good driving, good sounding uh, Volkswagen Mark V Rabbit here, 2.5 with a manual. If you guys enjoyed this episode and you're more interested in the DIY stuff that got me to this point, make sure you check the description, like I said, check the tags in the video if not, or just check our channel and uh, look at the playlist. You'll be able to see all the videos that I have posted on this car. From here on out, um, after we get all those DIYs posted, we're going to be looking at some performance upgrades for this car, some aesthetic upgrades on the outside, and we're going to do some interior stuff here too, just to make the car a little bit more fun, a little bit more exciting, and hopefully a lot louder because with the stock exhaust patched up, this thing's super, super quiet and it's not much fun. You can still hear this five cylinder a little bit, but we need a lot more, right? So thanks for watching guys, and um, hopefully we'll see you again. Have a good one. Definitely got to do something about that rev limiter. What is it rev to? 5,800? That's ridiculous. This thing should rev to at least 7,500 RPM. Maybe we can figure that one out with a little Nef Moto action or something like that, just to tick a box or crank that number up so that we can get a little bit more revs out of it.